In the last video, we had a very basic introduction to aromaticity and uh, conjugation effects. In this video and in the next series of videos, we want to examine um, what happens to the electron density of the benzene ring when various chemical groups are attached to it. Um, a reminder, by the way, that uh, the resonance videos began with video number four and have continued uh, through video 19. These are all non-aromatic systems, but they were different resonance systems. And we tried to build a progressive knowledge base as we proceed. So hopefully you've had a chance to to watch all the videos. And again, in the first two, first one, two, and three videos, we talked about chemical bonds and SP, SP2, SP3 hybridizations and the geometries that are involved. Uh, so we're assuming that all of this background is familiar with, to you now. And really, as far as hybridization patterns, this is all we need to know uh, to understand our basic presentation for different types of resonance systems. But again, um, if you have a chance, I think you'll find it worth your while to watch all the videos in the series. Okay, let's talk about um, the phenyl compound. It has this structure. And again, as we had um, discussed on our previous videos, on the hydroxyl group, the oxygen is sp2 hybridized. So here it would be like the nucleus, and then an sp2 orbital, another one and another one. This one is involved in bonding with the benzene group. This one is involved in bonding with hydrogen. And then we have an electron pair. So these are sp2 electrons. And then in addition for sp2 oxygen, again as we pointed out in the previous videos, there is also this pair of pi electrons. Now, to try to draw the different canonical structures for phenol, we're going to do exactly um, what we did in the previous videos. We imagine, for example, here we have two carbon atoms that have a pi bond between them. So they're each contributing, each carbon atom contributes a pi electron into the overlapping pi orbitals that forms this pi bond. And now we imagine this carbon atom of keeping both of the pi electrons for itself. Or in other words, it steals the pi electron from this carbon atom, leaving it with an empty p orbital. And this one, of course, will have a negative charge. So this carbon has a lone pair now of pi electrons, because it stole one from this carbon, giving it a negative charge. Now what can happen is this lone pair of pi electrons can come in and form a double bond with this carbon, the one that has an empty p orbital. So we have a double bond. But oxygen put up both electrons to form that bond. So it has a positive charge. This double bond is gone. These two double bonds remain. And then for the other canonical structures, we're doing the same thing. Here we have a double bond. Imagine if this carbon swipes the pi electron from this one. This 
this one would now have a negative charge and it would have a lone pair of pi electrons. This carbon atom then would have an empty p orbital, but this carbon atom has this lone pair of pi electrons, because it stole it from this one, along with a negative charge, but now this carbon atom can donate two electrons to form this double bond filling the empty p orbital on this one because this one carbon atom had its electron stolen by this one. So now we have this canonical structure. This carbon atom, since it donated both electrons to form that pi bond, no longer has a negative charge. The negative charge is now over here on this carbon atom. So here are three canonical structures that we can draw, you might think, well wait, we should be able to form a fourth one. Suppose, for example, this carbon kept, here we have a double bond, kept both shares of electrons, both, both electrons for itself. Well, what would happen then? Let's draw it. Okay, now we're going to suppose that this one keeps the electrons, giving it a negative charge. And then this carbon atom, this stays the same. This carbon atom with the negative charge has a lone pair of pi electrons. This carbon atom has an empty p orbital after this carbon stole its electrons, but this one with the lone electron pair can come in and form the double bond. It no longer has a negative charge because it donated both electrons to form that bond. And you think, well here, this could be another canonical structure then. But compare this, can we get them both in focus now, to this one. No, we can't. All right, imagine if we take this one and just flip it. This double bond is going to be down here, and this negative charge is going to be up here. And that's what this one is. The negative charge is up here. The double bond is here. This was here, but when we flip it, it's going to be right here. So this and this are the same. So we're going to erase this and see if we can get all these in focus at the same time. Okay. So when we attach a hydroxyl group, don't need this anymore, we have this type of resonance system set up. Here's how the hydroxyl group then would be interacting with the benzene ring, or specifically the pi electrons, the lone pair of pi electrons on the hydroxyl group. Now, notice that we have charge separation and we have electronegativity violation. We have carbons with negative charges, electron or oxygen is more electronegative and it has a positive charge. So it's not an ideal resonance system, but it occurs to some extent. And notice what happens. With a benzene ring, that has an electron cloud above and below the ring, as we um, discussed in the previous video, and you can probably find decent illustrations of that in your textbook. But now, with the hydroxyl group attached, at certain positions in the ring, we have an increased amount of electron density here and here. And I say here, also here, because these are the same. Benzene is a symmetrical molecule. So, as a result of having a hydroxyl group attached, we see 
increased electron density at the para position and at the ortho positions. And that, when you study more about the chemistry of benzene, you will see that that affects the uh, chemistry of the benzene ring in a very specific way. Now, with hydroxyl, here then is the resonant system. Again, um, it, it, it happens, but it's not a terrific system because we have electronegativity violation and we have charge separation. Well, what happens then if the hydroxyl group gets rid of the proton? In other words, let's say it steals the electron from hydrogen and the proton goes away. So then we would have another sp2 lone electron pair like we did here. This has a negative charge. Now, when these, these are the pi electrons here, when they come in to form this double bond, oxygen no longer has that negative charge because it put up both pairs of electrons to form that. So it's like this, that's gone too. Again, this had a negative charge, remember it puts up both electrons to form that double bond. Before, that would give it a positive charge, but it has that negative charge to start with, so it's just neutral. So, let's get rid of the arrow. Now, as a result of losing the proton, we have a much better resonant system. Instead of having charge separation, we just simply have charge dispersion, and there is no electronegativity violation. A much better resonance system. So phenol is somewhat acidic for this purpose, that when the oxygen gets rid of the proton, we have a better resonance system. And again, uh, this does not change the distribution of the extra electron density taking place at the para position and the ortho positions. I'm pointing to both of these because these are both symmetrical. They're the same. Benzene is a symmetrical molecule. We just pointed that out a few moments ago. Okay, so this is how an electron releasing group can affect the electron density of benzene. It does it, but it does it in very specific locations. Um, in the next video, we'll consider another example, but really it's going to be the same story, but it's going to have a different group attached to the benzene. But again, it will be another electron releasing group. So join us in the next video, and we'll discuss another system. Uh, reminder, the playlist for all of the videos is at the website digital-university.org.